welcome. Uh, so this is a quick posture profile on uh, Parsvatanasana. Parsvatanasana is an intense side stretch. Uh, let's see, Patabi Joyce used to call it the crown jewel of the standing postures, right? Um, sometimes referred to as pyramid pose or diamond pose. Maybe there's one or two other uh, names in there as well. Um, Okay, so I'm using a strap here just to give you some guidance on how one's feet might be placed in this posture, okay? So, when we review the pose, all right, let's first actually take a look at the posture, right? Essentially, right, we have a reverse prayer position with those hands and shoulders. I have pretty tight wrists, so the heels of my hands don't quite rest against one another. You might experience that, yes, your hands will rest against one another. That's great. That's fine, right? The palms, the, the base of the palms will rest against one another. Now, uh, the more flexible you are, also the, the higher those hands might go, the easier the uh, base of the hands, the palms might come together, all right? So those hands might climb up like a little bit higher. Um, you know, there are certain benefits to having the elbows kind of relaxed um, or the arms kind of relaxed. I prefer some retraction in the, uh, the shoulder blades, so the elbows are continuing to move back. Again, be really mindful of this if you, are, uh, if you have high level of flexibility in your shoulders. What I do suggest everyone to do, but it's, uh, especially those who do have a lot of flexibility, that is to use your fingertips. Actively press your fingertips into one another, right, their, their counterpart, counterpart on the other hand, right, they're pressing back. Engage the hands, engage the wrists. All right, so that this way the hand uh, and the wrist will, you know, kind of maintain stability and structure. Now, if I'm looking at placement of feet, all right, one thing I've noticed with a lot of students is there's a tendency to shorten the stance. Uh, there is like, um, I've heard of at the very least, this uh, kind of East Coast, West Coast kind of thing going on, uh, where on the East Coast, the stance has a tendency to be kind of shallow and short. Right? While on the West Coast, it could be quite long. All right? You know, find what's comfortable. I, my suggestion is to make sure you're not making it too short. Yes, it is a standing pose. Yes, you want to be able to step down into that back foot, but make it challenging enough for yourself. So, you know, widen those feet a bit. All right? Um, now, the placement of the feet. Now, I have this strap out essentially because ideally, Right, my, my heels are aligned in this posture. Right? I'm trying to rotate my body forward as I go into the fold. The, the gaze also is at the big toe, the front foot. All right, so this is like ideal. Now, if you have tighter hips, if you have difficulties getting the back hip, in this case, my left hip, to move forward, I'm just gonna let go of my hands for now. So if I have difficulties getting my back hip, my left hip, to move forward in space, uh, this could be uh, because of hamstrings, musculature in the hips, or even in the back as well. Um, if that's difficult to do, that's when you want to have a, a wider stance, right? Not a longer stance, well, as mentioned, right? So, you know, my positioning for my feet are about here, all right? Pretty long, for sure. But notice my heel's going to stay on the strap while I wiggle my right foot out to the right. This is going to widen my stance, all right? So if I were to bring that heel forward, I'm, you know, not quite at hip distance apart with those heels, but pretty close. For some, you might even go wider, again, depending on like how much those hips rotate. You'll notice that the wider the stance goes, not longer, the wider the stance goes, <clears throat> the easier it is to get the back hip forward, all right? This happens in Warrior One and in Revolved Triangle and in uh, Revolved Extended Side Angle as well. All right, so, you know, the placement of those feet, yes, the distance is important, challenge yourself, but the width of those feet, right, in relation to one another is also important. We want to get those feet wide enough so that we can rotate the back hip forward, no doubt, all right? So again, if I'm here, in my Parsvottanasana, heel to heel alignment, and I have some difficulties bringing that right hip, back hip forward, all right? I don't want to compromise that back foot as well. I know I've got tight ankles here, especially my right side. All four corners, back foot planted, right knee straight, 
vertical movement down into the back foot. I then try to move that hip forward. I explain this a lot in Warrior One, of course, but same principles. If I can't quite get that hip forward, I'm gonna wheel that left foot out a little bit, and then I'll notice that I'll be able to then move that hip forward a little bit more in space to square off those hips. When we're thinking about the front leg's hip, right? when you're thinking about that front leg's hip, and again, I'll switch things up. Back foot planted, knee straight. Front leg straight, that's the knee in which you could compromise if you need to when you go into the fold. All right, but we'll talk about that in a moment. Now, getting that uh, back hip forward is half of the work we have to do in our hips. The other half, of course, is the front hip. All right, so I'm going to wiggle out a little bit, widen my stance. I'm then going to draw the right hip back and in. When I go into the fold, or if I'm in revolved triangle, for instance, there's a tendency for the hip to push out a little bit. Right? So you have things like the piriformis and the gemelli and the, uh, I think the gluteus medius and the TFL, uh, the tensor fascia lattice, are going to keep dragging the hip out. And you'll notice that in revolved triangle, at the very least, that there'll be like kind of scrunching on that front leg's side body. All right? So we want to try to avoid that. We want to keep things as long and symmetrical as possible. All right? Always uh, referring back to Samastiti for guidance in basically all of your postures. All right. So uh, when taking the posture, uh, let's see here. Let me get the hands going here. Boop, boop, boop. You know the modification, I hope, right? The modification simply grabbing opposite elbows. Uh, some of my uh, older private clients, right? I just simply have them grab opposite wrists, right? And if you have really tight wrists or if you have some injury to your shoulder, elbow, wrist, just grab opposite wrists. It's no big deal, okay? And then if we got the reverse prayer, and I'm going into that fold, I just did a you know pretty full practice. I just did a full practice. So I'm going into my fold as I normally do. My chin is up here to that gaze towards the big toe. For some of you, you'll you'll go into the fold, and you'll notice that the bottom will begin to want to round. Right? It's my belief that the gaze towards that big toe is meant to keep the upper back long. So in which case, compromise <laughs> a little bit by by bending the front knee a little bit so that you can hinge the hips a little bit more and then go uh, kind of flatter, go into the fold with a flatter back, okay? Other side. I find my uh, position of my feet, distance and width. I'm rotating back hip forward. I'm going into the fold. If I find that things are rounding, I don't fold all that much, take a little bend See if you can get your body closer, in this case, to the left thigh. Right? This is going to mobilize the hip more. Now, you know, it doesn't have to be one way or another all the time. Switch it up. The straighter the leg, the more you're going to get into the hamstring. Right? The, uh, the more you might bend that knee, the deeper uh, the range of motion you're going to uh, create in that left hip or, or whatever, that front leg's hip. All right, so there's a balancing act between those two. Heck, why not exhale, bend a little bit, inhale, straighten? No, I would switch that, right? Exhale, bend, inhale, straighten. Maybe, I don't know. Whatever breath pattern might work for you. All right, we're thinking about those feet. Last thing, all right, uh, I talked about the back foot, four corners planted, knee straight, hip rotates. Front foot, we talked about the knee, bend it if you need to, but Ideally, right, what might happen is a little pitch of that heel out. Let's make sure that the outer edge of the foot is parallel to the edge of the mat. And we're really rooting the, the big toe mound down onto the front of the mat. There's a tendency to roll towards the outer edge of the foot. Um, not the case for everybody, of course. Always a focus on four corners, big toe mound, pinky toe mound, either edges, uh, you know, left and right side of the heel. Getting those corners down. Um, you know, evenly into the mat, really important. The action in the legs, scissoring, right? Gathering towards one another, right? We're trying to gather towards one another. This is going to help us with mulabanda root lock. The fold's interesting. Gravity pushes us into the fold, no doubt. But I want to be able to activate those belly muscles to create length for sure, but also to get the body to move closer to that leg. There's activity there, right? Like a clamshell. I talked about, I talked about this in my, uh, 
handstand uh, analysis of handstand that I just put out. So boom, like a clamshell, trying to close the body over that leg. All right, I oh, hope this is informative. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Peace.